Hey guys, welcome back to the continuation of Dakin versus Punisher or Frankencastle at this point. If you're new to the channel, I got a link in the description so you can see the first video and then jump back to this one. Because if you don't, you'll have no idea to the reason Punisher is so pissed at Dakin. Otherwise, I'm going to pick right back up after this. So the continuation begins with Dakin hunting down Frank. And I like that they insert this quote from John Milton that says, He that studieth revenge keeps his own wounds green, which will otherwise heal and do well. And the way it's placed when you first read it, it looks like it's just talking about Dakin, but I strongly believe it's talking about both Dakin and Frank. Because these two guys will take a grudge to the grave, whether it's theirs or the next person's. And when you take those two perspectives and you give it to an unstoppable force and an immovable object, the result is pretty entertaining. Because it's like those cartoons you see where they set these ridiculous traps for one another, but the trap doesn't work. And you're sitting there looking at it like, what in the world? Or it does work, but they bounce back from it miraculously. And this series is full of that. And so when Dakin continues on his pursuit for Frank, he kind of leaves before he looks. And I don't mean that in a literal sense because he literally did look, but he's not sniffing ahead for anything else but Frank's scent, which went cold about a dozen yards back. And he pays for it. <laughs> man, he pays for it bad, man. And after he falls into this trap, Frank is just standing there waiting on him. And while Dakin's still stuck down there making his threats, Frank doesn't feel the least bit threatened. And on top of that, he gives Dakin no credit for killing him because he considers that whole incident his own mistake. So after letting him know, he just drops a grenade in the pit and walks away. And so this time around, Frank is determined to play it a bit smarter. So he's waiting right outside of the pit with an M82 just pointed at the hole waiting for Dakin to crawl out. And so keep in mind, Frank's having all kinds of technical issues from the last bout. And his main issue really is his heart. Because if we jump back to where he was first stitched together, his heart was barely sustaining his own body, let alone the prosthetic additions that he had after the surgery. So in order to keep him alive and allowed to function morbius placed the bloodstone in frank's chest and aside from working as a battery he also figured it was a safe place to hide it as well too so at this point dakin's crawled out of the hole and he's still sizzling like one of them hot plates at applebee's and as he limps over to the corner where the punisher was just at he kicks a tripwire and it's another trap and all you can see is his feet as his car swings through and just rams him back in the tunnel that he just walked out of and this goes to show you that punisher's not stupid he covers his butt because we see here that he is prepared that in every instance if dakin walks away from this i'm waiting around the corner with that so punisher's right around the corner on the Collins with Henry Russo and Henry's trying to tell Frank to get back so he can get stitched up and give this another try later on but Frank's not hearing that he also tells Henry that Dakin has seen the bloodstone and he's got to kill him and Henry's like that's great now but before you do that you need to know there's a jet on its way to you with one passenger on it but before Henry even gets off who it is Dakin's back and Frank was trying to tell Henry that not only did Dakin see the bloodstone but Dakin recognized the bloodstone and he knew what it is he knew about its ability to give you immortality super durability superhuman strength so prying that out of Frank's chest is just like icing on the cake for him but Frank's not letting that happen in no time soon so he gets back up and turns the tables on Dakin swinging him around like face first into a wall and then as if that wasn't enough kicks him through that wall and about three other walls and so Dakin's like at a whole nother terminal now like it's crazy but he recovers quickly enough to get in position and get the drop on Frank and Dakin thinks he's slick because he cuts off the battery pack from Frank's back which initially lays out Frank but it's really not enough to stop him so once again Dakin sees the opportunity to finish the job and take the bloodstone for Frank's chest which would only leave Frank with his heart alone keeping him alive but Frank has other plans at this point so he reaches for that third rail and sends a crazy shock through himself and through Dakin which sends Dakin flying back and gives Frank just enough room to get out of the way of the oncoming subway train and this doesn't kill Dakin of course but it kind of shows us Frank's plan of wearing him down to the point to where he can inflict harm quicker than Dakin's healing factor can recover and Dakin catches on so as soon as that happens he gets up on the tracks and runs up to the to the ground level because he realizes he's in bad shape and he needs to get himself together heal up a bit before he engages back with Frank. So Dakin goes for the high ground in this construction area and Frank's already two steps ahead of him. He comes swinging around like Tarzan, kicking Dakin off the railings and going through about half a dozen floors. And I gotta say, I know Dakin's tough and all that, but he's about had it in this one. Because like individually, each one of these attacks would be a bit heavy on Dakin and he could recover from, but collectively, Frank is just dishing it out quicker than his body can recover. But at this point, Frank sees the opportunity to end it and he drags Dakin by his hair over to a pit of cement. And he just figures that he'll throw Dakin in there in hopes that it'll kill him, but if it doesn't, it'll harden he'll be trapped in there just thinking about life regrets until he finally dies but before he can even drop him in six claws go through frank's back and show up through his chest and frank can't believe it because in his mind he was so close to ending this and getting even with dakin but looking at those six claws go through his chest he already knew who it was and that's none other than wolverine and i like the way the wolverine comes off here because he's like hey i get it my son may be a jerk but i ain't gonna let you kill him and I love that he shows up here, man, because the relationship between Logan and his son is very rocky. 
But at the end of the day, that's still his son. But just to let you know in the continuity here that Dakin is Wolverine's only son at this point. At least that he knows about. Like, James Hudson hasn't crossed universes quite yet. So it's pretty obvious that Logan's gonna protect him because he's literally all that he has. And Logan tells Frank, like, straight up, man, just walk away. This ain't gotta get ugly. No more blood needs to be shed. Just walk away. And once again, Frank's not hearing it. And this is what I meant earlier about an unstoppable force and an immovable object. Frank is that immovable object, like, as far as his will to kill Dakin. So Frank engages with Wolverine like right off the bat. And Dakin, who's still trying to pull himself together, sees this and he's like, I cannot believe this guy. Like, <laughs> And it's kind of like when your dad shows up to a fight that you feel like you're winning, but you're really getting your ass whooped. You hate that he's there, but you're glad to see him at the same time. So Dakin tries to take this opportunity here to recoup. But quickly, Frank gets him pinned down so he doesn't squirm away. But as soon as Frank reaches to lay another hand on Dakin while he still has his foot on his back, when he reaches with that other hand, Wolverine jumps across and like just cuts his fingers off. But even after doing that, like Logan even tries to reason with Frank. Even while they're fighting, he's like, hey, I really don't want to do this, man. Like low key, I feel like he feels bad for him. Because you can tell Wolverine really ain't going in. He's just trying to keep his son safe. And that allows Frank to stun Logan temporarily. But Henry's here blowing up Frank telling him there's more pressing issues, man. They got all kind of SWAT and military finna come in like any minute. And for Frank, for him, that's the least of his trouble. Because if he can take down Logan and his son Dakin, escaping from SWAT and military is light work after that. So in the corner of his eye, he peeps that cement pool that he's going to drop Dakin into. And he takes Wolverine over there because he knows Logan's not going to stop at trying to stop him from killing Dakin. But that doesn't go so well because Wolverine wakes up sooner than he's expected. But that doesn't last for long because even though Logan's able to draw the fight away from Dakin, Logan just passes out again. And it even takes Frank for a surprise because he didn't even get to finish what he was about to say. And Frank's over him just like kicking him like, like you for real? But as he drags him back to that same spot, Henry's back on the comms telling Frank that he has to go now. Because all that SWAT and military agents reinforcements that was coming within minutes will be there within seconds. And so Frank takes the getaway route that he usually does. The filthy McNasty way. He gets in the sewer. And now me personally, I just don't understand. Like if you cut up and you bleeding, like why would you want to get some toilet water? I don't get it. But as soon as he resurfaces, all he sees is this box truck coming at him like full speed. And he has like zero time for reaction, man. And he just gets creamed. And as you probably guessed, this is by no coincidence at all. Because the driver gets out of the truck and is daking. And you can tell that Dakin achieves this by seeing a bit of predictability in Frank. Like how I was just saying that Frank always takes that sewer as an escape route. Dakin noticed that and he capitalized on it. And at this point, Frank is spent, man. Like that last hit that he took, took everything out of him. And Dakin just stoops over him because he wants to savor this moment. And make it as emotionally painful for Frank as possible. Because keep in mind, between the battery pack, the bloodstone, and his own heart, those are the only things keeping Frank alive. And now that Dagan has the bloodstone, he's just left with his failing heart. And like, for whatever reason, however he's set up, he's able to hold a, a charge for a, a short moment. Like back in the subway when he got Dakin off of him. But at this point, he doesn't have access to any of that. He's totally helpless. And he's lost the one thing that's kept his failing heart going. And so his heart left by itself without the stone or without the battery pack, it's not but a matter of time before he bleeds out. And just shuts down completely. But Dakin more so sees this as an opportunity for Frank to stay alive long enough to see him take the stone from his chest and put it in his own. And as soon as he puts it in his chest, he absorbs all the abilities of the stone. But it also seems like the side effects are a bit quicker too. Because I know with Frank, at a later point, he started going kind of crazy because the demon trapped inside the stone started messing with his head. But with Dakin already being crazy, it's kind of hard to tell which is which. And when the SWAT finally arrives, they got Dakin surrounded, man. And they tell him to put his hands up. He's like, okay, wait a minute. I'm gonna let you finish. But I need to do something real quick. And he just socks Frank right in the jaw. A little insult to injury. But nonetheless, Dakin's a man of his word. So right after that, he gets right to the SWAT team. And he starts tearing right through him. Like, oh, this the ass whooping y'all's in such a rush to get? But somebody should have told Dakin from a young age, watch out when you do split kicks. Because you can land in the middle of the street and get ran over by a garbage truck or something. I'm just saying. And Dakin is just pinned to this truck. And he's looking in the windshield. And Frank's looking back at him like, just die. But it pretty much goes without saying that Dakin's not going to be that easy to take out with the bloodstone in his possession. And Logan also notices that because he gives Frank a jump because he realizes in order for them to stop Dakin, they got to team up and work together only for the purpose of getting the stone back. And this is one of those very temporary team ups to where they have a common goal for a short moment. But as soon as that's done, they know they're both getting back to where they were. And that's Frank wanted to kill Dakin and that's Logan protecting his son. And what was crazy to me is how quickly the side effects would happen to Dakin as well, too, like the 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 boils that would come on his skin he would cut them off but then they would just grow right back like even crazier and then when frank shoves like two grenades in his rib cage man from there it just got nasty because they can explode and the mutations that are grown from his skin like they just go everywhere dude and when i say everywhere i don't just mean like here and there a few feet away from his body i mean everywhere dude it's nasty like even logan was freaked out for a second 
But still, he knew that was his opportunity to save his son and take the stone out of his chest. And Logan makes the noble decision here because he could have just took it, took his son and got out of there. But he made the decision to give it back to Frank. Because at the end of the day, Logan understands Frank. Like earlier when they were fighting, he was trying to reason with him. He was saying, this is not you. And even now trying to reason with him, he tells Frank that you know what it's like to be a father. And because of that, I don't need to explain to you what all I'll do to keep my son safe. But while they're there having this conversation, Dakin slips away. And as soon as Logan notices, he tells Frank to go get his satellite hacker to find him. And he notices that also he's talking to himself because Frank dipped out on him too. But that'll do it for this one, guys. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And if you enjoyed the content, go ahead and hit that like button for your boy. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, later.